ego I wanna lose control Oh, I'm ready to roll And I've been daydreaming about this night For a long time I wanna dance with you And we're gonna have a good time A thousand hands up to the sky We gonna get toasted tonight Can't let it fade We got a sparkle in our eyes Can't let it wait I'm counting down until we start We're renegades We come to play Yeah, we play hard Mmm And we're gonna have a good time A thousand hands up to the sky We gonna get toasted tonight Oh, I'm ready to roll And I've been daydreaming about this night For a long time I wanna dance with you on the Thank you. 
Day. It's hump day. Hump someone you love. If you're Tamra Judge, hump Bronwyn Wyndham Burke. Um, if you're Bronwyn Wyndham Burke, hump Tamra Judge. Yeah. I just caught up on Real Housewives of Orange County. Excuse me for the reference. Uh, same. Looking forward to recapping it at the end of this show. Also Kardashians I caught up on, which we'll recap. Great episodes. Yesterday was just like a day of recaps for me. Yeah, totally. Um, but ha happy Wednesday. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. I hope everyone had, I hope I could talk. Hope everyone hope had so a wonderful and fulfilling Tuesday. And I'm looking forward to an equally wonderful, even more fulfilling Wednesday. <laughs> Claudia's wearing a wig today. Stop! Oh my god. <laughs> oh my okay. god. You really look like No, you're I know. One. So I blew out my hair last night. Like I was trying to be, you know, prepared. And I slept with my hair like on my like share hair, what you used to call it. Like, if you could just look towards the camera and if we could get no, a zoom. No, I don't want to. If we could get all a zoom, Jake, on top of my great. hair. And for some reason, when you put your hair up, like your hair sometimes chooses to like move in one direction and not go back. It's like your hair follicles are on a uh, sabbatical. And I put my hair down this morning and it wouldn't lay flat like and I literally like greased it up I don't know how to get my hair follicles to go back down I look like I'm wearing a shadle and I grew up on a kibbutz in Poland but I'm working That's on it not the thing but um I think the wig look suits you you're wigging out today I am her wig is flown yep it's cool it is it's pretty cool Anyways, we have a great show for you today. Some interesting stories, some, you know, Always. minimal celebrity news that we'll just make a mountain out of. The usual. Are we talking about Selena Gomez's new song? No, we are not because we are above you like it? it. Okay, like, I need, I need to understand what's going on in the world. Like, it's a fine song. Is it amazing? No. Are the words, like, not more than, like, Wolves? I've been running. Yeah, like, it's better than her previous crap. But, like, the way people are talking about this song, like, it's written by, like, Homer. Like, it's the Odyssey. Like, it's a fucking oh, song, like E News, holding back our tears. Like, <laughs> chill the fuck out. Like, also, now it's that just a bad pop song. Also, like, you need to listen to it now after I say this. It's a Julia Michaels song. Yeah, I know. Like, no, but she wrote it, but it literally sounds like Julia Michaels is singing it, and it's a song I've already heard. Oh. You know, that is a theory. That Julia Michaels is actually behind the vocals it of a lot of people. It literally pop songs. I was listening to it in the bathroom this morning. I was like, I've heard this song, and it's Julia Michaels. And then I saw that she wrote it, which is fine. I didn't listen to but the song. But it sounds just like Julia Michaels. I overslept this morning. I didn't have any time for frivolity. I listened I, to it last night at midnight, and then I was just like reading people's like Instagram stories. There was like a master post about it in the toast. Why are we holding her hand? Like she's the biggest pop star in the world. The song. It's a, by no means is it a bad song. Well, I guess, but by no means is it like the, you know, the anthem of our generation. Like no one's going to care about this song in a year. People are dissecting the lyrics because it's about Justin Bieber right. and she hates him. Right. But lest we not forget, um, like. Selena Gomez was in the room while Julia Michaels wrote the song. So Julia Michaels wasn't married to Justin Bieber. You know what I mean? Right. People like are always putting... Also, lest we not forget, Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez broke up 10 years ago. Right. She's written so many songs about how she's done with him. She's done so many interviews about how she's done with him, but she's still writing songs like, he's married, bro. Like, when someone gets Agreed. married, it's like, it's you know, like Nintendo, like, game over. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Right. Like, unless there's a divorce, like, then you can come out from out of your hole. But just... Get back. Whack them all. I Lydia. agree. Groundhog. I just, the, as always, it's not the song that's upsetting me. It's like the world's reaction to it. Just like, it's, and I can't stress enough, it's not a bad song. Like, it's a fine song. It's okay. Um, but like, everyone being like, this song just cured my acne. Like, relax. I have to listen to it now. Snitch, is it a certified bop as our resident music expert? It's a good song. Yeah. It really is. It is. Yeah. Like, and it's no, like, fetish. You know, like it's right. finally good music from Selena Gomez, but I do understand where it comes from. And it's also just crazy because I've heard it already. Yeah. By Julia Michaels. Agreed. Right. I can't And Julia Michaels that. was on Twitter responding to people in the pop crave replies being like, Selena did write it with me. You know, like, please. Selena, relax. Selena, get off her Twitter. <laughs> no, we know, like, it's fine. Not everyone's a songwriter. Like, Katy Perry's not a songwriter, but she's still a fucking pop Katie star. Katy Perry is a songwriter. Mm. No, 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 like that. She, she wrote Harley's in Hawaii. No, but, like, she is a songwriter. But I'm Harley's saying some of her Hawaii. best bops I don't believe were written by her, like, Teenage Dream. Um, yeah, no, but she, like, writes songs for other people. It's a whole ecosystem. She is a song. She's not Is she Selena one of those Gomez. people who write songs for other people? Yes. What has she written? Like, like, I know Ed Sheeran has written a bunch of songs. Kelly Clarkson uh, has written some songs mm -hmm. for, like, One Direction. I just, I will. See ya. Kelly Clark's, uh, Katy Perry oh, yeah. songs written for other artists. No I'm pretty sure this is true, so, um, I just want to give credit to her, even though Ho Harley's in Hawaii is. Like, the promo for Harley's in Hawaii, although it's very toasty, it's like. Okay, songs written by Katy Perry, Black Widow by Iggy Azalea. That's actually a really good song. Yeah, I, I like that, that song. song. Yes, you do. 
Um, hold on. I'm just, this is a confusing list. Oh, a Nicki Minaj song called Get On Your Knees. Okay, Katie. Um, oh, Long Shot, which is a Kelly Clarkson song. That's a great song. I don't know that song either. Do you know it, Snitch? What? She wrote a Britney Spears song. Wow. Yeah, she's a songwriter. Okay, sure. so I take it back. But not every pop star is a songwriter, and that's okay. And that is okay. You, you can be both, or you can be one. Julia Michaels tried to be a pop star, didn't work out or for her. Or you can be neither. Right, like us. Like, yeah. No, no, you are saying... Uh, pop star, yes, I'm not a writer. But you didn't write the song. Very true, But you very did true. have influence. I guess that, that would be, like, the same as Selena Gomez. It's like, Toast was written because it was, like, your... What was inside of you, but you didn't write it. I would literally never in my life take credit for writing no, no, Toast. No, 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 I'm not saying you're taking I wouldn't, credit. And I wouldn't even have the gall to like, but, list but, myself but as that a songwriter. Song, like, it wouldn't exist if you weren't the one singing it. Oh, of course, of so, course. So, like, maybe that's the where the Selena Gomez applies here. It's like, she didn't write it, but it's like, a, it has to do with her experience. Perhaps, but... I just need everyone to relax when it comes to the Selena Gomez of it all. I know. People are like up in arms that we hate her so much. I'm I don't hate her at all. I don't think she's a good role model, first of all. You don't or you do? Don't. Okay. It was, it was unclear what you said. I, I really don't. Um, and I just don't get the blind loyalty. That's it. It's like, okay, even if I don't like someone, like I know why there are stands like them. It's like, Selena Gomez is the biggest fans in the world and she hasn't like worked in like five years. No, I just like need more from my artists than what she provides. Like she just gives what she wants other people to see. And I feel like there's so much about her that we don't know. But like you compare to someone like Ariana Grande who fucking bleeds out every single day for her fans. It's just like, I prefer that sort of artist. Also, I just don't really get Not what Not that we should be putting women against each other, but <laughs> it's just something we like to dabble in. But I, I just don't get what there is to Stan. It's like a song a year, maybe. It's no appearances. Like it's an Instagram, it's an Instagram post right before she's going to post to coach ad like she posts a selfie just so it's not all sponsored content like I don't just I don't get what there is to stand I think the stan the sanery comes from years ago and right. then these people are loyal like one day people just decided like they love Selena Gomez from like Wizards of Waverly Place and for a while she really was like on the machine and I think now they loved her so much then and now they see that she's struggling and so that has turned into like love and support for her no matter what happens it's kind of like Britney Spears yeah, but her stands aren't nearly as nuts as the Selena Gomez no, stands. No, it's just because they're older and they are really busy. That's true. Like, they have jobs. They have kids. kids they yeah. might have kids. Yeah. Who are fans of Selena Gomez. <laughs> and they're wondering why. Yep. <laughs> LOL. Well, oh, that was such an actor laugh. Yeah, like, like, oh. <laughs> no, I really meant it. Did that you? Re- yeah. I was really laughing. Wow. So are you fake laughing every other time? No, it was just a different sort of laugh, like an unexpected laugh because it was just a different laugh. It was laugh. just like, ha, ha, ha. You know, <laughs> like you were really like verbalizing the laugh. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it was just because it was funny. Also, Bronwyn's laugh. I'll, I'll make sure never to laugh again. <laughs> <laughs> Bronwyn's laugh on OC is... <laughs> it's actually a treat and it sounds like they're playing like a audio over everything but they're not she was doing it on watch what happens live as well and it's cool to see that like someone actually laughs like that all the time anyways we do have a squatter again today like please don't mind him it's so hard not to mind him i'm filled with rage no but he's like falling on hard times and like speak of squatters like we started talking about squatters yesterday and it ruined my fucking life because someone sent me this video it was the most shocking video of this guy who's Food kept disappearing in his apartment, and he thought it was his girlfriend, so he tried to like, catch her in the act, and he put up a camera and went to sleep, I and the squatter came out of the wall and spent the night watching TV, drinking from his fridge, from the carton. That's, that's... Jackie? Unforgivable. Peeing in his sink. No, why couldn't he pee in his toilet? It was he- a girl, and I don't know. She didn't want to leave the kitchen area. That makes it even worse. So she's there for, like, literally, like, th- like they keep fast-forwarding, like... She's in the kitchen. She's in the living room. Sad. And then all of a sudden she hears something. I guess he gets up to go get some water in the middle of the night while the squatter's out. She hears a footstep. You've never seen someone fucking move so goddamn fast. I don't know where she went because she went off camera to hide. He walked out, got a cup of water, went back to sleep. She went back like to, to finagling. But then the most shocking part is the next... She, she went back up and the next morning he goes out. He's ready for the day. He's leaving the house. He drinks orange juice from the carton that she drank from last night. She drank from the carton? Mm-hmm. Why couldn't she bring That's the That's what I said was like so unbelievably. You're going to squat in someone's make house. Dishes. Like, right. Then they'll think they have a ghost. But, so clearly this guy had cameras in his home, right? You know, he set one up because he thought his girlfriend was eating all their food. But it was the squatter. And I, this girl comes did like. Did he move out? This like, girl comes like climbing out of the wall and she looks. 
<laughs> so decrepit. Like, oh it scared me. I didn't go to sleep till two in the morning. I was so freaked out. That's horrible. There actually aren't a lot of squatter security footage tapes on the internet. Like, I, I thought I was going to fall down like a huge rabbit hole after someone sent me this one video. And you really can't find a lot because I guess they're so hard to find. So this video was like really premium. I truly can't. I mean, I know one video I won't be watching today. No, Margo, please. It's so crazy. I showed it to Ben. And now he's, because also before we went to bed, we were going through all the places in our home a squatter could hypothetically live. Yeah. And we have commercial air conditioning units and they're behind this like big closet. And it's like, we never look in the closet. Squatterville. Squatterville, yeah. Honestly, obviously our squatter is like getting really insecure now because we're talking about it. No, because now he's being quiet. Yeah. Like, because he knows we're on to He's him. in the walls and he's banging around some pipes. Yeah, I think he, he might be like working on the plumbing. Honestly, he's probably a toast who just wanted to like come watch a live taping. What's good? Come in. What's good, make squat? Yourself, what, make yourself comfortable, squat. What up? What's good? Okay. okay, well, I'm glad that I didn't choose the Selena Gomez song as a story. Because we basically already it, covered it. Yeah, no, but like I chose it so that we wouldn't cover it, but I'm glad that we covered it, even though I didn't want to. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I just like, I hate that sort of like, quote unquote news. Right, like when someone releases a song, it's written by somebody be else. Like it means absolutely nothing. Agreed. Like what oh Katy Perry's riding Harley's in Hawaii. Like I hope she's wearing a helmet. Like I don't I don't give a shit. No, I know. And now that we're talking about it, like can we talk about how sad like the promo for Harley's in Hawaii was? No, it was toasty, stop. No, I know, but like literally nobody. It went cared. nowhere. Oh yeah. Well, like, you know oh, check. I didn't even hear about the song. I only heard about the artwork because it was toasty. <laughs> well, I added it to my like songs, and um, I gave it a chance. And it was yesterday morning when I had to remove it from playing. Really? In my queue. Yeah, it's just not good. It's so weird. She was almost there. She was almost she there. She was there. She released two songs ago, the good one. Um, Guess it's never really over. Uh, Just because it's over doesn't mean it's really over. And if I think it over, maybe you'll be coming over again. Slaps. And Slaps. I was like, oh, she's back. We're getting, you know, prism. Then she released once another song, Small Talk. I don't Chit Chat. No. Small Talk. Awful. No. Yeah. Harley's in Hawaii. Like, the name is just, like, so not it. And it's like, I really thought she was back, but it's looking like maybe she wasn't. Also, it's like, in rewatching Glee, they love Katy Perry, and so I get to hear all of her, like, new, her all of her old music, and it's like, wow, like, I can't believe we had all those songs, and now, like, she can't do it. That's how she became, like, a bona fide, she is an icon, like, that's how she's sitting on the panel of American Idol, like, the work that she put in, those years, teenage dream, like, that was the work that made her what she is, and, like, now she, that happens with a lot of people, like, now she literally can't put out a good song for her life, that's like Christina Aguilera. Yeah. Except Lotus is so underrated of an album. Oh, so underrated. What's it the was, song with Blake Shelton? Uh, Just a Fool. Excellent. Yeah. That's from Lotus. Yeah. And What's the one, like the ballad, that I have in my head and I can't name? Literally, Blank Page, all of them are incredible. Ceasefire, yeah, Army She got of no Me. justice for that album. She, like, it was considered a flop and it was her best work yet. That's the worst. Right? Like, because then it's like, what's the point? No, I if know. people don't even appreciate art. No, so then it's like the music that is successful is like the cheap, like, pop songs. So then they'll just continue to put out more of that and not like the real meaningful music that flops. I think it was Light Up the yeah. Sky. No, but like... Light Up the Sky, yes. Yeah. Sometimes the cheap pop songs are great too. Like, don't knock on those. Right. But this, this just happened to be like a masterful work of art. And it was just like, was so unnoticed. Yeah. I just, it made me upset. I'm sorry. It's like um, Native One Republic. Yeah. It's like was, the things was that Native made them One Republic wasn't considered a flop. That's my question. Like Lotus is on like a list of worst yeah, albums Rolling of Stones. all time. Oh, damn. Yeah. I just, I know we've said it once before, but I feel like it's been a while since we've ever said it, that Native is probably the best album released in the last 20 years. Yeah. I don't know, but I Lotus got it on was released. <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> What'd you say? Lotus was released too in the last 20 years. Native by One Native Republic. Native is better than Lotus. Native is like an album like I will never say no to. Yeah. And he, I'm on the car. I'm on a plane, I'm at a party, put it on. I'm on vinyl. I'm on vinyl, Actually, yeah. Actually, I think their album after that, what was it called? That might, I might prefer that one. Oh, With um, like Life in Color. That's this, Native. This, this. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yes, it is. What's the one? We, okay, we have this conversation you once a year. Some Life in Color is Native. Me. Hi, I'm looking at it. Yeah, it it's is. all called Hold Native. It's, you think, like, there's no way there's that many good songs Literally, on one album. This one is I Lived. Oh. Uh, if I lose myself, love runs out, counting stars. Send the name. Okay, okay. Can't stop. You're right. Life you're right. Color. Like you're every right, single song is a freaking bop. No, you're right. If you've never listened to that album and you want to have like a cultural awakening, feel free to listen to Spiritual it. Spiritual. Whatever. As well. Or you just want to just wake the fuck up, listen to this album. It's beautiful. Okay. Well, without further ado, 20 minutes later, the squatter fell asleep. It is time to deliver <laughs> the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <laughs> I guess that's the thing about squatters. Like, they sleep during the day so they can come out at night and drink your orange juice. Yeah, so they your... should be quiet. He's not a very good squatter. Yeah, like, he just should have got... He probably just went got down to bed, yeah. from, 
from the night. Um, it's time to deliver the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. Hum. But <laughs> I do have to let everyone know that today's episode is brought to you by one of our favorite sponsors, OpenFit. It takes all the complexity out of losing weight and getting fit. It's a brand new, super simple streaming service that allows you to work out from the comfort of your living room in as little as 10 minutes a day. So we're all about bettering ourselves from the comfort of our own homes. And OpenFit is just that. You can get all the workouts, tips and tricks you need without ever leaving your apartment. So you never have to leave Theo and... You can just break a sweat and then hop in the shower, not have to risk anyone seeing you with your sweaty upper lip, you and know? Eat, Theo can even do it with you. Like, it's not necessarily work out for dogs, but, like, why can't they? You can work out with amazing trainers like Andrea Rogers, who's the founder of the worldwide sensation Extend Bar, or the newest workout, Rough Around the Edges, with six of the most badass stunt women on the, on, in the business. You can no longer worry about others watching you work out or feel the pressure to keep up with peers at the gym. Open Fit is great for all. It's affordable and accessible. Some places only sell classes as a package, and often you can't make it to every class. Open Fit brings the class to you. You'll get what you put in you see results within the first 30 days open fit has changed the way that we work out and texting our code toast to 303030 30, you can join us on our fitness journey personalized just for you right now during the open fit 30-day challenge our listeners will get a special extended 30-day free trial membership to open fit when you text toast to 303030 30, that's 303030 30. you will get full access to open fit all the workouts and nutritional information totally free again just text toast to 303030 303030 30. um standard message and data rates they might apply, but they might. no promises. Sign on. Look amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, first story, just some beautiful, beautiful news from some beautiful, beautiful people. Marin Morris is pregnant, expecting a baby boy with her husband, Ryan Hurd. It shocks me to the core that the, the toasters knew this. Did you know this? Yes, I heard it from the snitch. I read it in the toaster's thread. I'm like, no way. But then every time I saw a picture or something Marin Morris was doing, I was just looking at it through the lens like, hmm. Is she hiding a bump? And it's like, yes, she was, but like, or she could have just been wearing like, you know, Something, a poofy dress. Yeah, like, like maybe she just wasn't in the mood to wear spangs. And I just think this is so great. Like, it's just cool when like people who are at the height of their game, like they don't um, postpone like their their maternal needs, you know? Mm -hmm. Someone might think like, this is, you know, the biggest Marin Mars is ever going to get. She's on this huge tour. Like, maybe she should wait a few years. No, you can have it all. You can have it all. And she had a really sweet caption. The irony is just too rich that after a year of living in the girl headspace, the universe would give us a baby boy to even things out. The singer captioned a photo of herself with her cradling her baby bump. Quote, see you in 2020, little one. Those pictures are so cute. I can't believe they just came out like, yeah, it's a baby and it's a boy. Like, there's no, like, what are we having? Gender reveal. Yeah, like, I hate that shit. Like, I hate that shit. You know I'm going to do it, you know. You're going to have a gender reveal? Duh! Oh, my God. Like, are you going to find out the sex before you have the bebe? Yeah. I don't know yet. I got to prepare. Some people like to be surprised. No, but you don't prepare. You don't buy anything before you have a bebe. Yeah, you do. No, you don't. Not as a Jew. No, I mean, not as like a Haredi Jew. Like, you need a nursery and shit. You can set it up. I don't know. You can I'm, get a crib. You need to be able to bring them home. You know, yeah. You'll get the crib, like, the day. No, you definitely don't want to do anything before like the six month mark but like what would you be doing anyway but like I'm not trying to give myself more work when there's a bebe in the world like you know I'm buying that crib and that stroller I'm getting that free stroller without all the influencers have oh, I'm getting it no I'm spending the big bucks I'm getting that like old school pink stroller I don't know what it's called but it looks like what if you have a boy old school pink stroller it's called um I don't see gender so what's the point in having a gender reveal very, very true. true honestly gender reveals are really going out of style Right? They're yeah. so archaic. No, honestly, they're quite controversial. <laughs> why is, why, where is nobody talking about that? I don't know. I don't know, man. That's the next frontier. Um, also, one of my favorite things to do besides watching squatter videos is to watch like mishap gender reveals. Oh, that's not... Like, I, they put it in a balloon and the balloon flies away. For as much smack as I talk about gender reveals, I've never actually watched one. Like, I just, What? Yeah, I don't like How to How do watch. you live on the internet and have never I, seen a gender reveal? I see reveal? that they exist and I just like scroll right by them. You know? I scroll. It's I called scroll. the Silver Cross. The, yeah. The thing. The Silver Cross. Pink Silver Cross. I mean, yeah, pink. Because it's supposed to match me. The baby doesn't see color. Yeah, I just need one that has, like, lots of room for a sax and maybe, like, um, a lock and key I could keep the kid in, you know? Yeah, like a safe. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll ask Ryan Reynolds what he uses for Blake. <laughs> 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 I can't even. Well, I'm so excited for Marin. Me like, too. This is so great. This is so great. I love a good Bebe news. And now Cam, um, the country singer, is married. So it's just like a new generation of country singers. I know. I mean, I, yeah. I'm not going to like now put pressure on other women to have children. No, me neither. No, but it, like I could think of a few country artists like who, but who I are just, in this boat who could get pregnant. I yeah. just feel like in country, it's like a thing where like all the women, like they, they don't put 
career or family first. Like, they do it all. Like, they're all married super young. They're having kids now. Like, I think that's really admirable. What great role models. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Anyways. A hundred percent? Are you ready for our next story about um, the accidental role model, Lala Kent? <gasps> who's yes. celebrating one year of sobriety. Crazy. Vanderpump Rules star Lala Kent is celebrating a year of clean living. Quote, today I am one year sober, she shared on Instagram. This is the biggest accomplishment I've ever had in my life and the one I am most proud of. The moments I have had in the past year have been a blessing that I've been present for. I didn't have that before. Today I will celebrate my one year birthday because it's exciting. It is also humbling because today and every day after that, I will fight for it, but I won't give it up for anything. Wow. I remember when she went on Watch What Happens Live and she told Andy she hadn't had a drink since October and now it's October again and she's celebrating her one year sober anniversary and I just think it's incredible. Like I'm so happy for her, proud of her. Like that must be so difficult, especially in the world that she yep. lives in. Like think about us turning down a drink. It seems so hard. Meanwhile, we're like nobodies. Right. And she's a somebody like going to the Irishman. With Martin Scorsese. And like she can't have a drink and I'm so incredibly proud of her. Me too. And I just, I think anyone who is sober is my hero. It's so impressive. But given the line of work that she's in, like this is even more impressive. And she has managed to stay, stay so relevant. Like people who don't drink or don't party, like you, you kind of get left out of the drama because everyone's like heightened emotions. You're getting fucked up screaming at each other at a club in Mexico. So it really would have been easy for her to kind of fade to the background, but she's still like the biggest star in that show. And like Sheena drinks all the time. Couldn't be more relevant, you know? Yeah, but we actually haven't had a sober season from her yet. This one coming up, because remember they did go to Mexico and she was drinking, she had a panic attack. Oh, she yeah. was drinking. But I agree with you that she'll be as relevant, relevant if not yeah. more. And like maybe, you know, some of her cast members could like learn a thing or two about sober living. I feel like all of the Vanderpump Rules kids are genuinely like over drinking. Not over drinking, like they're over the fa- the thought of drinking. But because it's been such a big part of their success, I feel like maybe if they think they'll stop, like it'll affect their success you know maybe but then so do you think that they don't drink when they're not filming like they don't drink as much kind of i mean they all just bought two million dollar houses like they now really think of vanderpump rules like as their job yeah it's not just like fun we're getting famous it's like no they're starting families they're all getting married now like they're gonna have kids they have homes like this is their job yeah can we talk about lala kent the irishman press tour um all of it also there were been posters around um LA for the Irishman and I just like I didn't see Randall's name on any of them I was even reading the fine print well he's a producer so I think if there's ever uh like a behind the scenes person's name on a poster it's a director like James Cameron's Martin's Avatar yeah um so I don't think a producer would really ever be on it unless it was produced by like Gwyneth Paltrow you know like yeah so that's not shocking the fine print does shock me though yeah no like I I was up really close to the billboard you can see everything and I just I didn't see it not like saying that he's not part of it he's definitely involved okay yeah I mean he she's on the carpet with Scorsese it's so crazy and she looks incredible and she really looks perfect like for she looks like herself but also looks like you know, wife of producer. Right. Hello, Paris. Yeah. It's just so funny how, like, she plays two roles. She wears two hats. Like, she's, she's like, this vet, like this reality star on, like, this trashy show, you know. Um, and then she's also, like, a future Real Housewife of Beverly Hills. Because and she's, she's getting even closer to that. Because she's Erica Jane. And she's yeah. Mrs. Girardi, and she's Erica Jane. Totally. And she's Lala Kent, and she's Mrs. Mrs. Emmett. Emmett. Yeah. When do you, do you think they're getting married on TV? No, Me but neither. I think they are, they have a date, and I think it'll be in the spring or summer. Yeah, but they they film in the spring. Actually, Randall is pretty open. Actually, Surprisingly, he's, he's still never been on the show. So he's oh my god, oh my god. We have to talk about something. I'm gonna put the iPad down for what? this because Kylie Jenner is doing one of those giveaways. Louis Vuitton. I saw. And that you have to follow 75 accounts that Scott Disick is following. And I only had followed one of the accounts already. And it was Randall Emmett who is participating <gasps> in this giveaway to get followers. Stop. Wait. Okay. So. Hold on, hold on. So it's the people that Scott follows? Yes. <laughs> Bless you. She sneaked on it. Bless Excuse you. me. It's insane. I want to see if I know anyone else. That is so losery. I can't believe you found that out. You're a genius. I know. Well, there were other, like, huge, colossal losers of extraordinary losery Honestly, I think these people deserve to be called out for being losers. So okay. if I know, if I've, if I've ever heard of any of them. And you know what? They're getting around 200,000 followers. The Toasters have been keeping up with one of their least favorite bloggers who's a part of it. And they're comparing how many she had before and after. Yeah. So they're getting around 200,000 followers. Um, so Pretty th- little thing. Okay, but, like, that's fine. They're a thirsty cup. Like, they're a brand. If it's yeah. a brand, it's less... Crazy to me, because like you got to do what you got to do. Honestly, we should join one of these giveaways. I know two hundred thousand followers like that. Except it's not real, and they don't. Blah, blah, blah. How much you have to pay? Um, you know what? I once I've never got heard an email. Of any of these people. Wait, hold on. I once got an email <gasps> to join one of these things. Okay, first of all, Talentless is in here. Well, which well, is Scott's it's, brand. 
And by the way, they have 977,000. Also, Raising Cane's. Margot. That's okay, weird. You guys, you guys. That is weird. It's a chain in the South. I got an email to join one of these things. By the way, I've gotten them too. And I, and I followed up to see how much you get paid. Oh, no, you don't get paid. You paid, wait, no, 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 because I would be the one posting Louis Vuitton. Oh, that's embarrassing. Like, yeah. And there's no reward for you. No, the reward is they give you a flat fee that was just like not acceptable and you um, you can earn commission. Like I no. fucking can't. I want to be one of the people. I'll pay. I want to know how much it is. Uh, wait, where was the part where they talk about that everyone pays to get in to it? Uh, by the way, I get these emails all the time. I think it's like someone subscribed me to some email and I delete them, but I should really read them because it's fascinating. During this campaign, our page at, I won't say, will be following 40 to 65 pages who have paid to be part of this giveaway. All of the accounts that will be paying to be a part of this will be similar niche accounts to yours. This is, or an, this is an organic way for other influencers to grow their IG pages while also giving popular influencers like you, thank you, the chance to give back to your followers and awarding one of them with $2,000. I'm sorry I didn't give back, guys. Wait, I want it. I want to do it. I wonder I how much it is. I heard it's like 15 grand. Well, I think when it's on Kylie's page, she probably gets paid, let's say, I think half a million dollars for this, at least. That means there were how many accounts that were... That 75. 500,000. Divided by 75. Divided. And Scott is a part of it. Around $6,500. Hmm. I'm, I'm interested. Oh, like, I don't want to be the one posting the photo. No, I want to be the I one be in there. claiming the followers. Oh, you know what? I really want to see um, wow. Hoop Nation by Alexis was in there, which is actually, oh, she did 216. That's great. Yeah, no, like, for a brand. We should do it for the toast. I know, because even we would get 200,000, like, not toasters, obviously. But, like, maybe, like, 100 to or 200 of those people, like, might. Toasters in training. Might be interested. Yeah, right, like, might have to follow us. And then be like, oh, this is pretty cool. These girls are beautiful and smart and, and like, wonderful. But toasters. Potential toasters. Potential toasters. T-I-T. Tits. Toasters in training. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe I should reach back out. Maybe. Say, I'm not interested in this format, but, like, I'd love to be well, on the But honestly, end. we just missed, like, a big one. Like, the Kylie one. That's the yeah. one I would have wanted to be on. Yeah. I want to be on a Kardashian one. Yeah. Okay. We'll go back to it. Anyways, I thought it was interesting that Randall was there. But then I remember for his birthday like a year ago, he's friends with Khloe Kardashian and she posted. They were all like, he wants for his birthday. Oh, like, he wants for his birthday's followers. So I guess he's at least consistent and I already follow him. So honestly, it's pretty premium content. Is it? Yeah, he posted cute stuff of him and Lala. He posted like the new Gulfstream plane that just debuted and it was Ooh. actually pretty interesting. It was huge. Wow, I would like, like I to see that. I would have never seen it anywhere right. else. So. Just a little something to think about. Us aviation experts see that kind of stuff all the time. Right. When you're friends with the points guy, it's right. just... It's hard to be impressed. <laughs> okay, next story is just so sweet and just setting the bar high for husbands everywhere. Kanye West donates $1 million to prison reform charities for Kim Kardashian's birthday. Oh my God, I didn't hear this. Yeah, so um, she posted on her Instagram a picture saying she had the best birthday ever, explaining what they did. Her mom and Kanye hosted a party for her at her house where Carousel, their favorite Armenian restaurant that they go to on the anniversary yep. of their dad's death, catered. catered. Uh, she said she got the most amazing presents from her family, like some great bags from Kanye. But most importantly, um, he also donated $1 million to her favorite charities that work so hard on prison reform on behalf from him and the kids. That is so sweet. Like, I could die. So sweet. Well, so I just caught up on Kardashians when she was talking about how someone wrote her a letter from prison asking like to get their tattoo removed, but they couldn't afford it. Wait, I didn't see that. Yeah. What episode was that on? I'm not caught up. It was Met Gala, so two episodes ago. Wait, I can't believe I missed that. Yes, yeah, so basically, like, she was so busy. They were talking about how busy she was. Um, and she's like, and I have to go do this thing. Like, some guy wrote me from prison about this tattoo that he, like, needs to get removed. But, like, he can't because he can't afford the laser. So, like, I told his mom I would pay for it because he gave me his mom's phone number in the letter. She, like, went and, like, took care of it. It was so cute. Oh, my God, that's so cute. I can't believe I missed that. Where yeah. was I? It the was when she was sitting on the couch, I think, between the Met Gala and the after party. Oh, when she was turning into her blue look? Yeah, I think. How the frick did I miss that? Yeah. It's so weird. Uh, that was actually a really good episode. Very interesting. So interesting. We will get into it. I need to like get all my thoughts back to the top of my mind. Um, but before we do that, Lori Loughlin has been hit with additional charge in the college admissions scandal. Before we do that, are you ready to own that now? Oh my God. I thought you'd Almost never forgot. ask. I yeah. thought you'd never ask. No, I know. Um, today's episode is also brought to you by one of our most prestigious and business savvy sponsors, Vistaprint. 
The most important time is now. The importance of feeling professional, polished, and prepared when it counts is right now. For small business owners like ourselves, or people who produce their own podcasts, being plugged in and prepared when an opportunity comes up is crucial. And having a business card that shows how professional you are in your pocket, ready to hand out, is the first step to making that happen. We always say on the show, the worst time to realize you need a business card is right after someone asks you for one. You never look like more of a messy piece of shit than at being asked for a business card and not having one. It's like, oh, I can give you my email. Like, I can write it down for you. Like, no, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. get a fucking business card. Get your shit together. Or it's like, oh, I can get your number and then you're a creep. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Like, what is this, 1972? No, it's like, what do you ask me on a date? Like, give me your fucking card or butt or... <laughs> Bug off. Ready to get started on your business card? It's super easy. Plug in your information and logo into hundreds of fresh designs to sit tailored to your type of company or upload your own design original layout. Pick the paper stock style and quantity that's right for you. You can even upgrade to unique touch like rounded corners. You can order and receive your cards with free economy shipping. You can feel good knowing that Vistaprint uses only carefully selected inks and responsibly sourced paper stocks. Your satisfaction is 100% guaranteed or your money back. They will make it right. Vistaprint wants you to be able to own the now in any situation, which is why our listeners will get free shipping on all business cards, any style, any quantity. Just go to vistaprint.com, enter promo code TOAST for free shipping on all business cards, any style, any quantity, limited time offer. Own the now at vistaprint.com, promo code TOAST. You will support our show when you support our sponsors, so feel free to get your shit together and head to vistaprint.com, use code TOAST. Feel free to get your shit together. Sign on, get your shit together. Okay. Speaking of shit not together, Lori Loughlin has been hit with an additional charge in the college admission scandal. She is among 11 parents who on Tuesday were hit with more charges in the national college admission scandal. Her husband, Massimo, was also charged with the new count. According to the new indictment, the 11 allegedly, quote, conspired to commit federal program bribery by bribing employees of the University of Southern California to facilitate their children's admission in exchange for the bribes. Employees of the university allegedly designated the defendant's children as athletic recruits with little or no regard for their athletic abilities or as members of other favored admissions categories. So this just seems like more of the same. And right. I feel like they're really cracking down. Now the Felicity is in the jumpsuit. Like, all bets are off. Now it's like, really in hindsight, like, Felicity's legal team really advised her in the best manner. Like, she, she could have been one of those people who got hit with another charge, but she pled guilty. She didn't waste the court's time, and she's doing her time. I don't know. It's not done yet. Like... It's not done yet, is all I have to say. But, same, but it's just not looking good. And, like, if all Lori Laughlin has to do is spend 12 days in, like, a very low, but like, high-budget, low-security prison just to risk not being charged more or, like, I think she really totally made the right move. And to society, like... But it's it, not, it's not going to be 12 days. And it wasn't going to be... Even if she pled guilty, it wouldn't be 12 days. Felicity Huffman? No, Lori Laughlin. You said if all Lori Laughlin has to oh, do... Oh, I'm so sorry. Felicity Huffman. Yeah. Like... And, and Felicity Huffman going to jail from a PR perspective makes it seem like she understands her punishment, she understands what she did was wrong, and it might make it easier for her to like rehabilitate and like get back into, into Hollywood and get back to work um, because she's no longer a criminal, she's rehabilitated. Um, but with this Lori Laughlin thing, I don't know. And it's just like, now, now it's more charges being dragged out even longer. We'll be talking about this even longer. Olivia Jade is going to take longer to get back on YouTube. Like, I just... I don't know where it ends for Lori Laughlin. And, and I see where it ends for Felicity Huffman in like a week. In a week, yeah. I wonder if she's going to do any press after, like a sit-down interview. She's not that thirsty and she's not that desperate. Like, no. and, and I think she's fucking embarrassed. Like, No, and I think also it's like, if she wasn't doing interviews, sit-down, tell-alls before, like, she doesn't need to do them now. She doesn't know us anything. I'm not like, you know, needing to hear every detail about her, her personal life. I didn't know anything about her before. before. I just enjoy her work. Like, I think a lot of people didn't even know she was married to William H. Macy until they were walking into court together. No, she was walking alone. Oh, true. But he did come to pick her up. Yeah, that was nice. With his little briefcase. That whole thing was weird. No, it's still weird. Yeah, and how he wasn't charged at all. And it's like, has he been visiting? Can someone get eyes on that? But I'm not gonna lie, like of the two of them, who can handle prison? Lynette. Uh, I would agree, but you just I feel like Lori lachlan has got a fighter inside of her. Sorry, no, I was talking about William H. Macy and oh, Lynette. Like, you don't think um Frank? Frank? No, like of the two of them, like I really feel like Felicity Huffman can handle prison. Yeah, I don't know them. No, me neither. But I'm pretending like I do. Yeah. Um, with Felicity, with Lori Laughlin, like I don't, I do not think she can handle prison. Like she doesn't give me like the tough, thickest, like the vibe. I know, but she's she's standing her ground here. I know, which makes me think like, is there more to the story? Because she seems so sure that she's not going to be convicted. Because like when you're guilty, like you take the deal. You do. Yeah. 
or you run the risk of getting a way worse. Like, if you know you're guilty, here are your two options. I wonder what deal they offered her. Right, I don't know. Maybe she'd get offered one. Yeah. Like, if you know you're guilty and they're giving you a deal where it's like, you have to do time, but it's not nearly as bad as it could be, or you can take a risk and, like, maybe get off or get, like, a much worse sentence. But you know you're guilty. What are you taking? The deal, right? Uh, I guess it depends on the evidence they have. Also, it depends on um, if you're, like, a gambler, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Gamble with your life? Yeah, I would so take the deal. I'm like, I'm out. Chips yeah, totally. Live for a deal. Cards down. And if I watch, if I learn anything from watching Law and Order, it's that you always take the deal. Yeah. Fifth and final story is a little interesting ratings news that mm. I thought would be interesting. Because Kelly Clarkson's new talk show is a hit. And here's Thank why. God. Here's why it's a big deal. So, it's hard to figure out if the Kelly Clarkson, this is more of an opinion piece by CNN Business, but I appreciated their opinions. Mm -hmm. It is hard to figure out if the Kelly Clarkson show is a daytime variety show or a daytime talk show. Whatever it is, it's working with viewers. Since debuting last month, the show is averaging roughly 1.9 million viewers per episode. That's good enough to put her in fourth place among daytime talk shows, according to Nielsen. Fourth place may not seem like much, but the show, which is syndicated by NBC Universal Television, is only behind shows that have been on the air for years. That includes Ellen, Live with Kelly and Ryan, and Dr. Phil, which has led daytime talk with an average of 3.1 3.1 million viewers per episode so far this season. Time out. I found out something crazy last Jordan night. Jordan McGraw. Jordan McGraw, who opens up for the Jonas yeah. Brothers, who has a song with Sarah Hyland, it's Dr. Phil's son. Because Dr. Phil is Phil McGraw. Oh my God, I was wondering like why they liked him so yeah, much. Yeah, like how he got so far and nobody knows who he is. Yeah. I Dr. See Dr. Phil's son. Everywhere. Dr. Phil's son. Maybe Dr. I'll, Phil's I'll have son. to give a listen. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interessant. Clarkson also outranks other established shows in daytime, including Mari, Dr. Oz, wow. and Rachel Ray. She's also bringing in bigger ratings than another daytime new, newcomer, Tamron Hall. They like pretty much got shows at the same time. At the time. same time, but in, in Tamron Hall's defense, they promoted Kelly way more than they promoted Tamron. Like, I didn't even know Tamron got a show. Yeah, it's also like a different kind of show. Like, Tamron's not doing Kelly Oki. No, Tamron's very like sit down interview style. Yeah, I, it's not fair to compare the two of them, but they're just giving us like a bunch of different comparisons. And I just think this is great news for the industry. I love Kelly Oki. And you want to know what I like about Kelly's show is that I've never actually watched it. But, but I love it. Yeah, but I love it. And I just, through orga- organically, I've been, like, had clips, like, sent to me or someone retweeted it. And I get to see, like, the nice stuff that she's doing. Like, I live for a Kelly Oki. Like, somehow it's always retweeted almost every day. I think one of the people I follow who's, like, a housewife stan is also a Kelly Clarkson stan. And he retweets everything she does. Also, then she had Craig Morgan perform. And, like, everyone was crying. So that clip went viral. Oh, my and I God. Saw it. Then she had Chance the Rapper on, and they were, like, vibing so hard. And then she also had Christina Aguilera on, and they had this conversation about how Kelly Clarkson never knew that Christina Aguilera was one of the main writers on Behind the Scenes. One of, one of Kelly's, like, hit songs. And they were talking about, like, the industry is always, like, keeping females apart. Like, it was really just, like, an interesting conversation. So she's doing interesting things, and it keeps coming across my desk without me ever having to watch it. Yeah, and that's the sign of success in this day and age. Yeah. Um... Anyways, this is a big deal because, it's, as we know, it's almost impossible to succeed in daytime. And other popular musicians like Harry Connick Jr., Queen Latifah have tried their hands at daytime and failed. Even veteran interviewers like Meredith Vieira struggled to find an audience. Yeah, that was terrible. But you know what I find really shocking? Queen Latifah's show not taking off. Like, I think she's so relatable. I feel like everyone loves her. Maybe it was, like, a little bit before she was, like, appreciated as a queen. She really is. Maybe. But it's also, like, you can be an incredible person and everyone can love you, but that doesn't mean you're going to succeed in daytime television. It's really this hard nut to crack. But what's crazy is, like, we kind of knew that Kelly Clarkson show would be a success from the minute it was, like, announced a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Maybe we're just, like... So let's call it now. Let's call it now. What do you think about your Barrymore show? Do you think it's going to be a hit? I don't. I don't. I do. Okay. It's not going to be as big as Kelly. So it probably will be. I think it will be a success. Also, I have some information to share. Not information, just opinion. Just experience. Um, so we were on the Lady Gang podcast, which uh-huh. everyone should check out. And they posted a clip of our audio on their Instagram. And I like was listening to it. And for the first time in my life, I couldn't understand myself. Like I was talking so fast and slurring. What? I slur now. Okay. I, okay. Feel, I think I need to go to some sort of vocal coach to work on my speed and enunciation. Diction. My diction, diction as well. I just think I get so lazy, I just like talk out a bunch of words. But I really <laughs> need to talk. You do that. Yeah, I know. I really need to work on my delivery. Well, Lady King, it's like it was great, but there's four people, which makes you feel like you have to talk faster because you're taking up like three other people's time. So maybe listen to like a Toast episode. Maybe. Or Nick Viles episode when that comes out. It looks like it's going to be next week. (laughs) Becca Tilly's on this week. Yeah. 
Um, which is fine because we just had Lady King. It's good to split it up, you know, each week, bringing in new audiences. Oh, yeah, bringing in the audience. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's fine. Let's recap OC. Let's. Because OC Fashion Week was last night and it was the event of the season, according to Bronwyn. Um, I have to say, a party on a boat is. Never a good thing. No, and it was like a three-tiered like cruise ship fashion show. It was so weird. Honestly, it sounds like a nightmare. And why do they have to move upstairs just to finish the fashion show? That made no goddamn sense to me. I don't know. But that whole interaction with that lady was fucking brilliant. Because first of all, the whole thing started with um, Dr. Beth. Is that her name? Dr. Deb. Dr. Deb. Um, like starting a fight with this random dude. And By I the was- way, did they just repurpose Lydia's mom and like cast her again? They gave her a wig. <laughs> I... When I was watching that whole scenario unfold, I was very much on the side of the dude being like, this Dr. Deb is a little nuts and I don't really believe anything she says. And like, let, let's say the guy was a security and asked where she was going. Like, that's not that crazy. Like, you know yeah. what? Like, yeah. he didn't know that she was a part of the show and she could go upstairs before everyone yeah. else. It felt like she was being a little extra, like, overreacting. But you know what? She, you, like, that's okay. Like, she's an older woman. She didn't feel comfortable. She felt like someone was touching her. Like, okay, say sorry and move on. Like, it was it's not like she's your, you know, like... It was very similar to when Aviva Drescher's dad showed up at that event that Ramona was hosting and brought a check and touched her arm. And she was like, at a women's event, you are a charity. You are going to offer domestic abuse. You are going to touch me? But Aviva Drescher's dad was like... A freak. Yeah. But still, like the level of drama, I mean. Yeah. I, I, I guess. I don't know. It was weird. Like, it could have just been nothing but then that woman. Oh, right. So it could have ended and there. And I feel like if that woman hadn't done what she did like we would have never even seen the clip of her arguing with uh, the security guard uninteresting until kathy marino i looked her up her name is Catherine marino she is that if that was an audition for a housewife she got the role she was fucking crazy when she was walking around with the microphone oh my god hashtag bully like i could die like it was so cringy it was so funny like and i actually really respect the women for like backing down because like she was obviously thirsty and just like looking for a fight and they could have like you know that's like kelly's button like she she'll go off in a new york yeah. minute but she didn't and i i was glad for that no same i think this week and last week's episode of oc have been the best in so long Me like too. they've had Everything, and I think last week was great because it was like all the fun, drunken Drunk. energy that you love from Housewives, and this week was just like the mundane funniness of Housewives. Also, the inherent sadness of a fashion week that isn't New York, Milan, or Paris. Like, right. Like, remember um, Brooklyn Fashion Week in New York Housewives Stop. season one? Like, that is classic Housewives. Like, m pretending like this lame event is like fashionable and cool. Yeah. Um, no, actually, the altercation between Kathy Marina and the women was giving me like season one vibes where like they would just run into strangers and have like random ass <laughs> fights that were like cringy and about nothing. Like, that used to be so much of the bread and butter of Housewives. Now they fight about like, you put me in the paper and like, right. you know, they have like these new celebrity problems, whereas they used to just be nobody's having like nobody problems. And it was, it harked back to that time. And I thought it was fucking hilarious. Andy really needs to get her on Watch Rabbit's Live. Like, she she was a star. So on Watch What Happens Live last night, he had Bronwyn and Gary Gennetti. I saw. And he asked them if um, if she should be a housewife. Oh. And Gary Gennetti was like, I would give her a call back, but, like, yeah. but no. And I thought that Andy was being a little condescending towards Bronwyn, like, and a little judgmental about like her lifestyle choices. Mm. And it was kind of like disappointing to me. It was her first time on Watch What Happens Live. And like, she's been so open with us as viewers. Yeah. And you know she's not my favorite. But I've I'm coming to like her more and more. And she's like carving out a place for herself in Housewives that no one is yet. You know, no one else is going to, like, get down and make out and with make other out, Housewives. Yeah. Like, this is a new dynamic that is, like, it's fun and interesting to watch. And different. Right. And, like, Andy was just, was asking her about some of the things that she's, like, spoken about on the show. And she had, like, really great answers. And she was talking about how this has created a dialogue within her family. And, that, and she was like, we're not like other families. Like, we are different. And, and I'm cool with that. And he was like, yeah. But it was just, um. it was, it, for a network and a person who's like so progressive, it was like, she's just out here trying to be herself. Like, I don't, and it was their first time meeting, Andy and Bronwyn's first time meeting. And oh. like, I just had a pit for her. That's really it disappointing. Because felt like he was judging her. Yeah. When it's like, even if you don't agree with her, like, at least be respectful of the fact that she's like sharing her whole life, truly right, spreading so her open. legs for this show. That's really upsetting, actually. Mm -hmm. Like, it makes me sad. But, um... She was being insane last night. But that's also just the vibe that I got. That's true. Her outfit was out of control, like one of the ugliest things I've ever seen in my I life. I like the top. Sure. It didn't fit. Like, it was so much extra material in the back, and her tits were popping out. Um, like, it's called a Taylor, sweetie. Look it up. Um, but I want to talk about Adeline. 
Okay. She's stunning. She's stunning. And I think they're trying to go like the Gigi Hadid route. I know. The issue is that Shannon is not Yolanda. I know. And so not only is it like, does she not have like the expertise to share with Adeline, but like Adeline doesn't respect her because it's not like her mother used to be gracing the covers of Vogue Netherlands. Denmark. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's not the same. No, not at all. But I think everyone and saw honestly, what happened. And if it's not working for Delilah Bell and Amelia Gray, I don't know. Actually, I think then because Delilah Bell and Amelia Gray are literally copying like word for word what the Hadith sisters Same did. Same franchise it's too. Like now we're just having like Falila and Familia and <laughs> Familia and also. Um, what was I no, say they're just Fifi them? and Fella. But wait, what was I going to say about them? Adeline's just a little different, so maybe she does have a chance. No, also, like, first of all, Adeline's so beautiful. Also, Del Delilah doesn't really work as a model anymore. She doesn't? No, I think she moved back. Is that a choice? Yes. And Amelia is very much like a working model. But they both, like, I don't think they're so passionate about modeling anymore. Like, the show did blow them up. Like, they're, I mean, you would consider them celebrities. Like, they are. Yeah, they're, they're influencers. Because of the show. They're, they're more well-known than the average influencer. Yeah. Because of the show, but it didn't do the Fifi fella. It did not do the Fifi fella. Not at all. Um, but be, I'm I'm excited for Adeline, I, and it's been a while since we've like championed champion. I mean, she just did OC Fashion. Championed Week. a burgeoning model. She just did OC Fashion Week. It's like when we were watching Gigi on Beverly Hills, like she was doing shoots for like guests, Express, yeah. And Yolanda was telling her to stop eating. Yeah, but and like she, if she if she felt faint to have an almond. So I feel like this is a little premature, but like I could see her doing some really like, commercial stuff. You know, like one where she like does a leap and a smile. She looks like Christine Froseth. Yeah. She's very pretty. I think she, she could do it. And she, I thought she walked great. I thought she did too. When she, she was, was walking in the living room, clod hopper, not good. She couldn't walk in those shoes. Yeah. Also, Shannon was giving horrible advice. And, and I'm glad that she didn't listen to Shannon. Shannon's energy was just off. Agreed. Like, it's serious. It's, yeah. And, and she, she did a good job. Yeah. And she was just like screaming. And it's like, that's not constructive. Pop, pop your hip. Like, shut and, up. Oh my and God. And also, it's like, for Adeline, it's like, why would I listen to you? What do you know? No, she's a thousand percent right. Like, just watch YouTube videos, girlfriend. Yeah, but, but like, Gigi and Bella, like, they would listen to Yolanda. Right. Because she knows. Um, keeping up with the Kardashians, we had uh, Courtney. Oh, no. What happened this episode? Um, the, well, we had the Met out episode. We got the birth. The Oh, and the robbery. Oh, yeah. Courtney was being so nonchalant about the robbery. Like, there was a robber in her house, and she was standing there, and Chloe was like, go. Like, it was so stupid. Um... Oh, and then the trip to Turks and Caicos, the girls' trip. Larsa versus oh my God, we what's that girl's Sarah. name? Sarah. And by the way, there's something that happened last season or the season before where Sarah Howard was the woat, and we talked about her on this show. Did we? Yes, and I forget what it was, but she was being like so fucking annoying. I can't remember what she did. Well, regardless of the actual fight, uh, just the vibe that I got from Sarah is that like she's not someone I would want to hang out with. Like, first of all, the way she talks about like comparing men to the food that she eats and how particular she is about safety, like all while she's holding a jewel, like. Is so stupid. The hypocrisy. The hypocrisy is so real. Also, the way that her and Courtney were talking about like their jobs for Poosh, like because they have to post, they can't drink that much. Like, if your job is putting up two Instagram posts a day, like you don't even know what hard work is. Like, she just gave me the vibe of like someone who's never known real problems, and like just listening to her talk about like her life in this complex way when it's like not that complex. Yeah, no, she's just really not my kind of girl. Like, I could barely watch her on TV, let alone hang out with her. And I know, I guess it's controversial that I'm like firmly Team Larsa. It's just that like Larsa seems like interesting to hang out with and I just like her energy of like shut up like I'm yeah. just saying things that people are thinking like when she I, was talking to Sarah and she was like so I guess her, that's her thing that she's single because that's how she was talking like all the time it's just like funny you know Sarah's like like Larsa honestly I understand after this episode I feel like now so many people are like I don't understand why the Kardashians are friends with Larsa after this episode I actually do understand why they're friends with Larsa like she's funny as fuck I am definitely more of a Larsa um, but the one thing that I didn't agree with Larsa on is like, okay, Sarah was 1000% being annoying. Like, and honestly, she probably ruined the trip for a lot of the girls. But like, to be so rude to her face, like when we're, we're all grown adults, like it's just so unnecessary. Like be normal and go talk about her behind her back with, no, but with, like, with Malika. But as we saw in Real Housewives of Orange County, like don't go and talk about me behind my back to everyone else. Say it to my face. Gina but they're not really friends. They're, they're only, they would, that, that's what they were saying. They would never be on a trip together if it weren't for the Kardashians. So like they don't owe each other the respect of like hashing out an argument. Like you can just not no. like someone. And pe a person like Sarah and a person like Larsa couldn't be more different. And there's no need for them to be, not be, to be actual friends. So like they don't need to like have it out. Larsa was definitely being too mean to her face. Like no, but. Here's no matter how you slice it, you're on if, a girl's trip, it's Sarah harmonious. If Sarah had come in and been like, there's a girl crying in the bathroom, and Larsa just like walked away and like snickered with like Malika and Chloe, it would have been like, oh my God, she's so petty gossip girl and like mean. As opposed to just saying, so? No. Do we know her? Why is she crying? That girl Sarah. Why should we care? No, because then it makes it seem like that girl Sarah is like so innocent and Larsa's so mean. When it's like, okay, that's probably true, but that girl Sarah is 
like a moron. Like, like this girl crying in the bathroom. Like, who fucking cares? Like, so stupid. And I totally hear Larsa, but like, when you're on a trip like that and like you're on TV and now people are gonna be commenting on how you act, like, don't be so mean to someone's face. I I'm like so dismissive. I thought it was hilarious. And that's what I like is like, she didn't care what she looked like. Why are you telling us this? We're having a great time. Do we know this girl? Do you even know why she's crying? And then she was like, she probably left with her boyfriend 20 minutes ago and we're still all here fighting about it. But, but Jackie, she was so right. I'm just saying she her was, delivery. But I liked her delivery. Like, I respect her delivery. Yeah, also with the guy thing, she was being like a little annoying. Who? Larsa. Oh, I agree. I Trying hate that, I hate that friend. Yeah. He, the house is dope. We should go. Like, but it's obvious that like she told these guys to Miami to come because so they could hang out with the Kardashians and the Kardashians like didn't want to go because like she literally made these guys fly out like she had to at least see them. Yeah, that part of the episode where also Courtney needs to speak up and say like that she doesn't want to do these things with Larsa anymore like that I understood but in general I, like I'm not a Larsa but I like respect the hell out of her. The Larsa hustle. Yeah, like just the bullvon nature yeah. of just like saying what's on your mind. Also made me really want to go to Turks and Caicos, like that ocean water. Oh my Mwah. God. Turquoise. Beautiful. Also, it was interesting the way they split up the cars, like made me think that like Chloe like was totally team Larsa because it was just like Malika, Larsa, Chloe, Courtney, and Khadijah maybe. And it's like, that's the crew. That's the crew that I would want to be in. Of course. Yeah. Like I could never hang out with Sarah. I know. And like the fact that she's the co-founder and like the co-partner of Poosh is just all you need to know. Tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. Sad. Yeah, that was just a hilarious episode. Um, it was good. And we have Dallas tonight, but I did catch up on last week's Dallas, but we'll recap it all tomorrow. Yeah, I need to um, catch up. And I need to catch up on this week's and last week's, no, one episode behind of Dynasty. Yeah, I need um, to watch We lot. didn't really talk about it, but the first episode came back and it just like put, set us back like literally two seasons and I was like honestly annoyed. You guys, yeah. I'm really, like I love Dynasty. I will watch it on, like, t on its last episode. But I'm really hating Crystal 3.0. Oh and my I, gosh! And she's I'm so awful. annoyed. Like, yeah. Okay, I really liked Crystal 1.0, and then when like she had to leave and they brought in a new Crystal, I was annoyed. But I came to love Crystal 2.0, and now I hate Crystal 3.0. And I and don't know what to do. I don't explain. I don't know. What's the point? Is it like a joke, or they no. really can't find someone? No, I, I guess no. Anna Brenda didn't want to do the show anymore. That she apparently just didn't show up to work. Crystal like, number one. Crystal number two. Crystal number one. They just didn't like her. Which Crystal number one was the best. Was the one. cutest. Like, yeah, but no, actually, I love Crystal number two. Like, cause at least like she was a new character, so she had like just better characteristics where she was just like funny and and headstrong whereas like now crystal 3.0 has that same attitude but she can't carry it off because like, no one's going her. up against dominique i'm like sit down please but if it was anna brenda i'm like yeah, yeah. dominique this girl sucks <laughs> like and, she's and the ruining whole concept the show. of them changing it that's well ruining the i show. guess it's like dynasty was a soap opera so bringing it like just changing characters like that like that's actually something that they would do and so oh, like, that, that's why in that way it's not a big deal but it's so unacceptable. And you know what? If you needed to get a crystal 3.0, fine. But get me the best crystal of all time. I want Penelope Cruz, okay? Yeah. She would be great. Yeah. I just, it's really bothering me. I can't watch the episode with being like, who's this woman on my television screen? I don't like her. No, I know. And she's supposed to be carrying off the energy of crystal 2.0, but she has the energy of crystal negative 2. You know, crystal 2.0 <laughs> actually was fiery as fuck. I, yeah, I, I loved like her. her and the hair, and she has a great relationship with Liz. And now, like, Oh, sorry, Fallon. And now Fallon, like, what is she going to compliment on her hair still? Like, she's still going to want to touch her hair? That was right. hilarious. It's not the same hair. It's not the same hair. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's no bueno, but we continue to watch, and we continue to stand, and we continue to be a dynasty. We continue to be a dynasty. <sighs> oh, TNN update. Lauren Elizabeth's first episode just launched today, so check it out. Support our new TNN show with Lauren Elizabeth. It's called Mood with Lauren Elizabeth. And it's available right now, so when you log off of here, go head over to Podcast Store and listen to it. And then it'll really be time for lunch, so your day's basically um, and over And you'll have a late that. lunch, so then you get back into the office around like 2 o'clock. 3. Day's over. Woohoo! We love you guys. Thank you so much for listening to The Morning Toast, The Millennial Morning Show, where we go live Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time on YouTube, so feel free to subscribe to us on YouTube, like this video, give it a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast pretty much anywhere podcasts can be found, so it's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places. Subscribe over there, leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. We love you guys so much. Have an amazing Wednesday. Amazing. Hump someone you love. We will be back tomorrow. Bye!